Hello everybody. Today we are going to talk about setting up your price book in Successware 21 for use on SW Remote when you have a flat rate based price book so that your tasks are set up with a flat rate based task. Uh, so we're going to talk about setting that up right inside Successware today. And to do that you would click the purchasing inside of Successware then go down to the price book and this will load up the price book here in front of us. If you get this message here you can simply click OK right past it and it brings you in and loads up the price book here for you to work through. We're going to go down now and select the task section here. And this is where all of our price book groups and categories are going to be right inside this task. So at this point we're going to go through and we're going to select I, a flat rate section that you may have. For me, my heating jobs is a flat rate section. So if I click on it, it loads it up here for me. When it's flat rate, I can hit plus here and you can see all the different categories that you have labeled inside here. So for example, you could set up all the different categories to show all the different types of work you're doing. Or if your flat rate book is a custom book that maybe your team has built and each page might have a heading on it or each page might be a, its own subsection, I would re recommend making a new category for each page in your price book. So for example, your first page might be these 12 sear condensers. The next page might be these 24 volt gas valves. The page after that might be the AC and evaporator coils right here. Basically organizing the price book on the device here inside of the categories the same way it's set up back in, in your price books that your technicians are looking at every day. So that's what you would do. And to create new groups and uh, under this category, you would right click on the category and you go to new and then you create a new group. When you create a new group, you would go ahead and give it a group ID and a description. On the devices, the groups will sort alphabetically by the group label. So uh, right here, if I wanted it to show up first, I might put A in front of it or put the number one in front of it. But for example, if I was just creating a group here called miscellaneous, I would type in MIS and the description would be MIS. I can even change the sale type. So for example, if this group happens to have a different sales type than some of the other groups, I can change it. Uh, maybe it's an IEQ section, so I want to set it to IEQ. Maybe it's a, a traditional service section, maybe it's a plumbing section, whatever it may be, you select the appropriate sale type. It will automatically default to the sale type that you have set for the entire category of your price book. So you click save and that will save the new uh, group that you've created under that category. So then you can go back to the section, the heating job section. If you scroll down, you will then see the miscellaneous section right there. So that's how you would go through and create a miscellaneous section in your price book. Now let's talk about some different things here. So you have your tasks inside of here. Well, with your tasks, you're probably going to have your task right there and its price. Now, if you're one of those people that use predetermined price levels, you could set it up so that you get these price levels on the category level. So right up here under the entire category so that you can dictate your price levels across all of the different tasks in each group, which is the section below it. We have category here for heating jobs, group here for the ones below it. And to set up price levels, so for example, maybe we have a club member price that's going to take 15% off of it, or maybe we have an after hours price that's going to increase it by 25%, whatever it may be. We could do that by going right inside the category. So we click on the category, we right click, and we go to edit category. And this will bring a section where we can now edit the top level category for all of the tasks below it. We open this up and we can go in and change it to be a custom pricing group. If it's already set here, it, it, it could be set there, or you can go through and change it, and then you click Custom Pricing. And this will give you a section to then load up the price book here in front of you, and now work on the category level about all the tasks. So uh, under this category, we're worried about tasks. So we come to the task section, and there's some things I can do inside here. So for example, I have round prices to the next dollar checked here. I can check that off if I want to make sure that no matter what I do to the prices, it always rounds it to the next whole dollar amount. If you're one of those people that are flat rate and you don't use any change, you're going to want that round prices to the next dollar checked. In addition to that, you're going to have a section down here that says use preset pricing formulas. If you have that checkbox, you can now go through and create different price levels based on uh, certain uh, percentages you're going to give them. So for example, I have my standard price here, which is standard. Well, maybe I want to create now a club price or a yeah club member price right here, 
or service member, whatever you guys would happen to call your club memberships. And a club member might get a certain amount uh, off. For me, I'm just going to say it's 15% off. So I take negative 15. And by doing that now, it's going to automatically go through every task in my price book and create a new price level that is 15% off of it, which is for my club members. This way, I, the technicians, when they add a task on the invoice, can then select the appropriate price level, whether it be a standard price or a club member price. They can go through and check that off. Also, if you wanted to create maybe like an after hours price or some kind of price level that might be above your standard rate, you can go through and change that by just typing in after hour. And then instead of doing negative 15, you can do plus or just leave it alone and type in just the 20 without the negative sign. And now that will create a price level that is now 20% more than my basic standard price here. So if I have any kind of price level that I want to show, or if you have some retail price level you want to plug in there, you could as well. And once you're done here, you have set up your price levels. So after you've set your price levels, you can go ahead and click apply, and that will save your price levels for the category that you're working with. You click yes, and that will save all that information, and then you hit apply, and it'll go through, and it'll actually update all this information right here on the device. It takes just a moment here because it's actually applying all the price levels to the tasks inside Successware. I click OK and it'll do all the math for me. I can go back in now, open up my heating jobs section, click on any one of the groups below it, and you'll see that it now has three price levels. The standard price, the club member price, and my after hours price. So this way you have set up price levels for your technicians to select from when they go through and add these tasks. So that's how you would set up price levels in a flat rate book. Now let's talk about maybe adding or subtracting tasks. So for example, maybe uh, you're here under your compressors and you have your one, your, your two, your three, your four, five ton. Maybe there's now a six ton compressor and you want to add that task. You can simply right click and go new task item. And this will allow you to create a new task and this task will show up right there under this group. So you right click, you hit new item and now you have an item number. You can even follow the same kind of nomenclature here. So for example, uh, if you already have like uh, 8610, 8615, 8620, I can go through now and add a new one that would just go along right with the same uh, nomenclature that you have there. So I add my item number, and then I can add my description, and we'll call it a 6-ton compressor. Again, this is just an example. might not be something that uh, you, you would do out in the field. I just want to show you how to add items into the price book so that your technicians can select them. You go ahead and you hit the item number in the description, and then you can go through under standard price here and set the price of the item. Depending on how you do it, you can do it using the uh, time and duration on the task and using all of any kind of preset pricing formulas you may have set. Or if you're just using it as a flat rate book and, and it's something that's been set up before, you can just go into override our price and type in what the new price would be. So let me just kind of see what I have here. I have $977. Let's go ahead and say this one is $1,077 and I click Save. Looks like that item number is already in use, so I can just go ahead and change it to be what I need it to be. And it will save it and then it goes through and it adds that item for me now as well. So you'll see that I have my six ton compressor with the item number uh, it will not let you make two item numbers the same number, so uh, that's why it corrected me there. And then I have my price. So that's how you go through and add tasks. So what we talked about so far was adding a price level, making sure you have your groups, adding a new group to uh, add items into, and then also adding additional items. The last thing I want to talk about with Pricebook is making sure that you have your miscellaneous items taken care of as well. With miscellaneous items, I'm talking about things like diagnostics, your service fees, your trip chargers, whatever it may be that you charge for going out there that's kind of above and beyond what your typical price book will encompass. So you want to go through and you, you want to make sure that there's a section for your technicians to go in and select those items because they're going to be adding them onto the invoice. And also with those items, I, you want to make sure that you have kind of all your bases covered. So when a tech goes out, he or she can select the appropriate task that uh, dictates what they are doing. So maybe it's just a regular diagnostic, so you can have standard diagnostic there. Maybe it's an after-hours diagnostic. Maybe it's a club member diagnostic. Maybe it's a, you know, a fall super saver special diagnostic. Any of the different types of diagnostics 
and trip fees and service fees that you will at some point charge a technician for, you need to make sure you add in this section. So you need to kind of go down and think about all the different circumstances and all the different prices for a diagnostic service fee or miscellaneous task and add them in here. So I've gone through and, and kind of just to give you an idea of what, what one would look like under a miscellaneous section here, you can look inside here and see that I have my diagnostic, my tune-up, and my after hours. That's all the different tasks that I might charge to a uh, customer at any point. And now that's just a couple of different items in there. Again, things to think about would be tune-ups, would be permit fees, would be chip chargers, would be you know out of range chip chargers, would be diagnostics, after hours diagnostics, any kind of uh, radio specials you do or, or mailer specials, anything that is something that a technician will be charging on the invoice, you want to make sure that there's a line item and a price assigned to it for the technician to select. So just think about that when you go through and you add your miscellaneous items. So when wrapping up, the things that you need to think about with your flat rate price book is making sure that you have your category open here as well. With that category, you've got to make sure you have each group below it so that you have your groups and these groups can be the same if it's a, a, a custom book that you've created. These groups can be labeled the same thing as each page is on your price book. This way your technicians can flip through a price book and also see, that, see it on the device and be able to compare the two. With each group, you need to have all the tasks under it. And tasks come through in numerical and alphabetical order based on the item number. So if you want them to show up a certain way, you need to make sure that they're in numerical order based on the item number or alpha numerical order if there's any kind of letters in it as well. With each task, if you have price levels, such as a standard club and after hour price, you want to go up to the category and make sure that you edit the category, go into custom pricing, and create those price levels. And then lastly, with your uh, with your price book, you need to make sure you go in and you add a miscellaneous section or a section that's going to cover all of your diagnostics, your tune-ups, and your after-hours charges. Once you're good there, this will all be downloaded onto the device upon a technician logging in so that they'll have the newest up-to-date price book and it'll already be there for them to work through and build an invoice. If you have any questions about putting in a flat rate task book, please call the Successor support team or you may reach out to SW Remote Support if there's questions pertinent to how it hits the Successor Remote devices. Thank you, and have a good day.